Hello, this is Pick, and this is a quick tutorial on how to automate the Infusion Alter, primarily for the mod pack integration by parts presented by FTB. Once you've placed down your Infusion Alter, you're going to want to place an item user on each pedestal for the thing you're going to automate. I'm automating empowered seeds here, so my configuration is going to be designed for that. This is primarily for the automation of the seeds themselves, rather than all the components for them. So for stuff like power, I'm just going to use a creative energy cell and call it a day. The exact quantities of things aren't too important as they'll depend on what setup you're trying to make. In this case, I'm going to be using six item users, some redstone components, and you, know, you can kind of just see it as I use it. There's things you want a lot of regardless, so it doesn't really matter on the numbers in particular because you should have a bunch anyway. Of course, you'll also want to make sure you have power to supplement it, and all that other stuff, like the item inputs, you get the point. I cannot recommend Immersive Engineering's wiring enough, though. They're extremely handy for making cleaner redstone setups. You know, like the one I'm doing here. To keep things simple, as far as the item users go, the power will go on the bottom, the item interaction will go on the side, and the redstone interaction will go on the top. Of course, to have redstone on top, it'll have to be capable of seeing each other, and I think making a big pole will make it simple to see what's connected to where, as well as coloring the nodes properly. Make sure all the item users are synchronized, as the total pulse time affects their tick delay. But if you want to reset them, you can always break and replace each of them to make sure they get resynchronized. This will then go into a redstone clock, which is going to be our input to the item users for the redstone in the system. The clock settings should have a delay higher than the crafting time. In this case, 100 ticks is the crafting time, so you should set it to something like 120. And the total time it's active should be 20 ticks, because that matches the delay on each of the other components. Most forms of item detection don't work on the infusion pedestal, so I'm stuck using a vanilla comparator. That's okay though. Set the comparator facing from the infusion altar into a block. This is going to have a redstone connector on top of it, and then we're going to set up another redstone connector on a block not adjacent to one of the item users. Then place a redstone torch on that block, and a timer from RF tools next to that torch. The timer is going to have a time same as the crafting time of the item, and it's also going to make sure it's disabled when a redstone pulse is active. Then lead that into a repeater so that it has enough of a pulse to activate the item user that's extracting. I'm going to separately define the input and output redstone of the system so that it's easier to tell what's going on. In this case, I'm using white for the input and magenta for the output. Item input isn't too challenging, so I'm just going to put a stack of redstonium crystals into each of these item users and then a stack of crystallized seeds into the one in the center. By far, the easiest way to handle item logistics for this is Blood Magic's routing nodes. However, you might not have those at the point you've unlocked the infusion altar, so you can use any pipe, but you do want to make sure that they're not going to be disabled by redstone or anything. I think you should definitely use either pretty pipes or the logistics nodes, though, because those are the only ways you can really control it properly. To explain how the timer section works, it's basically making sure that if there's an item on the pedestal, the timer is active to take the item off when the crafting is finished. As long as everything is synchronized and the crafting operation occurs as it should, it'll work properly. Would you believe me if I said we were almost done already? Yeah, this isn't a very complicated setup. The item users are a little bit pricey with the Invar and Constant and gears that are required to craft them. But really, even that's not too bad, especially because I give a fair amount of it through the quests. To fill up a little bit of time in the recording, I'm just going to talk about the immersive engineering wiring real quick. So how it works is you have 16 channels that you can choose between, one for each color of Minecraft dye. If a connector is set to input, it will of course accept redstone, and if it's set to output, it will emit redstone. If you've ever used bundled cable from Project Red or Red Power, which is the mod that inspired Project Red, you'll feel right at home with this. It's not too complicated. All you have to do is make sure your inputs and outputs are set up properly. What gets passed through doesn't actually matter. You can pass an orange signal through as many blue conduits as you want and it won't make a difference as long as the output is also orange. Just make sure that the output and input are consistent and that's all that really matters. 
The last component is that which takes the seed off of the pedestal when it's finished. Of course, that's the item user hooked up to all that fancy redstone, but then, because it goes right into its internal inventory, you can just pipe it out using whatever pipe you want. I'm using pipes because it's easy to set up. And then it'll go into the chest, and then you can send that wherever it needs to go. Once the clock and everything are set up, you can turn the system on. And as you can see, it works pretty well. It's consistently making empowered flax seeds and not messing up by booting the items off of the pedestals or anything of that nature. If you don't care for item logistics, you can just stop watching here. Otherwise, keep watching and I'll explain how to make sure the system doesn't break if it doesn't have an infinite input of items. So, I set this system up off camera. It wasn't too difficult to set up. All you need to do is get a bunch of pretty pipes and some drawers and you're pretty much set. Each of the drawers is connected to an inventory checker from RF Tools. This is what determines if there's an item in the chest and how much. In this case, I'm going to detect if there are four redstonium crystals in its drawer and one crystallized flaxseed in its drawer. These are then hooked up to an inverter for redstone, so when there is less than that amount in the system, it will automatically turn off, because then it won't be allowed to run if it doesn't have the proper number of items in it. Other than that, if it turns on, it'll disable that and it'll work as normal. To make things go faster, I put some speed upgrades into the pretty pipes that are extracting, and they extract for a round robin to make sure that each of the redstonium users has enough redstonium to craft. That's basically it. Now you know how to automate the infusion altar. It's a little different if you want to make infused crystals, but the general idea is basically the same. You'll just want to make sure all of your redstone is hooked up properly and that preferably you have enough room to do the setup. Don't cramp how much space you have. Thanks for watching, I hope you'll enjoy this and my developer commentary series.